very happy in your presence to present this gold record to Ross. I don't know if it'll work, but it's certainly magnificent to display. Them sing their own Camelot. Our new socialist, King Arthur, was a very tall lawyer from Cabramatta, eager to walk the world stage. I'm proud to say that I, Les Patterson, was an integral part of the Whitlam Camelot. If you think of Goth as King Arthur, and the round table with old Margaret there as Queen Guinevere, I was Merlin. I was the think tank. I was the ideas man. And I came to him and I said one day, and he locked the door and he said, what is it this time, Les? I said, I need money and I need telephone numbers, Goff, because this is for a special project. It's the Disabled Black Lesbian Puppet Workshop. He looked a bit strange when I said that. He said, you need big bickies for that, Les? I said, yes, the Black Disabled Lesbian uh, Women's Puppet Workshop. And he said, now look, Les, he said, he started to write the check. He said, who's this really for? <laughs> I said, Goff. I said, it's for me. He said, what are you going to do with it? I said, I'm going to piss it up against the wall. <laughs> he said, Les, you're an honest man. I'll double it. A significant victory for Australia took place in 1972. It was a cultural one, and at the Royal Albert Hall, no less. Mrs. Green's daughter, Belinda, donned the tiara of Miss World. It hasn't quite registered. I haven't realised yet that I am Miss World. And never one to miss a photo opportunity, Caesar himself was on the steps of the Senate to welcome home his generals with the spoils of their victories. The adventures of Edward Garth Now, don't move. Let them walk to you. Right? And then, a friendly welcome. The director, Bruce Beresford, and I felt that the return of Baza and his auntie Edna in the second Barry McKenzie film should be marked by a similar triumphant encounter. why he made me a dame. It could have been for political reasons, because we see eye to eye on most topics, and my services to conservation are well, well known. In fact, the United Nations has given me special mention, not just Australian landscape, which I've conserved, but our wildlife, particularly our lovely old marsupials. These are not alive, these sulphur-crested cockatoos. But they died a long time ago, but they were friends of mine, and I conserved them. Little did they know <laughs> that they would be turned into a beautiful frock. Whitlam's Camelot had its run cut short. After three years of scandal and gross mismanagement, the Senate cut off all funds to the administration, and the Governor-General of the day, Whitlam's friend, Sir John Kerr, stepped in and dismissed the Labour government. Gough had his last moment of glory on the steps of Parliament House on Remembrance Day, 1975. Well, may we say, God save the Queen. <laughs> Because nothing will save the Governor General. Well, I know, is this an affront to the Constitution of this country? Or was it just a stroke of good luck for Mr. Fraser? Thanks very much. This one. A quickie election was called to find out if the people were as displeased with the government as was the Senate. We know the hopes confided to us by millions of our fellow Australians. Dinky, 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 dinky
The Labour government was decisively turfed out. Goff became a self-appointed martyr, canonised by the media. And Sir John Kerr spent the rest of his days in exile and in odium. The adventures of Edward Goff.